Welcome everyone to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and this continues the series of Sherman on Atlanta. In this video, I will be highlighting the response that Sherman gave to Hood, who accused him of atrocities committed in his campaign against Atlanta. They also debate whether Atlanta citizens should be removed from the city. As you will hear, Sherman was irritated by the claims that Hood leveled at him and he fired back just as intensely. In the field, Atlanta, Georgia, September 10, 1864. To General J.B. Hood, Commanding Army of Tennessee, Confederate Army. I have the honor to acknowledge the receipt of your letter of this date at the hands of Messengers Ball and Crew, consenting to the arrangements I had proposed to facilitate the removal south of the people of Atlanta who prefer to go in that direction. I enclose you a copy of my orders, which will, I am satisfied, accomplish my purpose perfectly. You style the measures proposed unprecedented, and appeal to the dark history of war for a parallel as an act of studied and ungenerous cruelty. It is not unprecedented, for General Johnston himself very wisely and properly removed the families all of the way from Dalton down, and I see no reason why Atlanta should be accepted. Nor is it necessary to appeal to the dark history of war when recent and modern examples are so handy. You yourself burn dwellings along your parapet, and I have seen today fifty houses that you have rendered uninhabitable because they stood in the way of your forts and men. You defended Atlanta on a line so close to town that every cannon shot and many musket shots from our line of investment that overshot their mark went into habitations of women and children. General Hardy did the same at Jonesboro, and General Johnston did the same last summer at Jackson, Mississippi. I have not accused you of heartless cruelty, but merely instance those cases of very recent occurrence, and could go on and enumerate hundreds of others, and challenge any fair man to judge which of us has the heart of pity for the families of a brave people. I say that it is a kindness to these families of Atlanta to remove them now, at once from the scenes that women and children should not be exposed to, and the brave people should scorn to commit their wives and children to the rude barbarians who thus, as you say, violate the laws of war, as illustrated in the pages of its dark history. In the name of common sense, I ask you not to appeal to a just God in such sacrilegious manner. You who, in the midst of peace and prosperity, have plunged the nation into war, dark and cruel war, who dared and badgered us to battle, insulted our flag, seized our arsenals and forts that were left in the honorable custody of a peaceful ordnance sergeant, seized and made prisoners of war, the very garrison sent to protect your people against black slaves and Indians long before any overt act was committed by the Lincoln government, tried to force Kentucky and Missouri into rebellion in spite of themselves, falsified the vote of Louisiana, turned loose your privateers to plunder unarmed ships, expelled Union families by the thousands, burned their homes, and declared by an act of your Congress the confiscation of all debts due Northern men for goods had and received. Talk thus to the Marines, but not to me, who have seen these things, and who will this day make as much sacrifice for the peace and honor of the South as the best-born Southerner among you. If we must be enemies, let us be men, and fight it out as we propose to do, and not deal in such hypocritical appeals to God and humanity. God will judge us in due time, and he will pronounce whether it be more humane to fight with a town full of women and their families of a brave people at our back or to remove them in time to places of safety among their own friends and people. I am very respectfully your obedient servant, by flag of truce, W.T. Sherman. Many reasons contributed to Sherman wanting the civilian population out of the city. For one, that would keep him from worrying about sabotage actions taken by civilians against the army. And two, if he moved them out and with the Confederate army, that would force Hood to take care of them and slow him down. This letter exhibits his effort to end the war as quickly as possible, and how he felt about the rebellion itself. He personally thought rebellion and secession was an illegal act. Thank you all for watching. The patrons voted for me to animate the Bloody Lane or Sunken Road during the Battle of Antietam this week, so stay tuned for that on Friday. Thank you all, and have a great day.